Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. With me today is Tony Salinaro, fitness professional of over 18 years, a great guy, and he's going to talk to us today about fitness and cognitive health. So good morning, Tony. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. Nice to be here. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm, uh, I just have to tell you, I'm uh, 71, so I think cognitive health is something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Uh, I believe in it. In terms of, of uh, health and fitness, uh, I've been uh, uh, concerned about that since I had uh, uh, you know, kind of a crisis in my life uh, about 40 years ago. Uh, and... Uh, so I started taking up a little bit of jogging here and there, and, and then eventually uh, got more and more into it. And uh, so my background is usually more into customer service, but uh, I made a big career change at about 40 years old and uh, eventually became a fitness professional, uh, certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And I'm also a USA track and field run coach. And... Um, also a coach with Roadrunners Clubs of America. So I've um, been an advocate for, for uh, you know, about 40 years now of um, keeping an active lifestyle, eating properly, and, uh, and resting, and resting properly. And uh, so what I'd like to do today is just, uh, you know, just have a conversation about why it might be important to uh, stay active and... Uh, I know uh, Jennifer, your your circumstances uh, reoriented towards uh, your own circumstances in your in your family. Uh, you have uh, Alzheimer's um, affecting your mom, mm-hmm. and uh, so I wanted to let uh, your audience know. I've also had uh, uh, you know encounters with the, the Alzheimer's dementia in my family. My mother has passed away about. I don't know, three, four months ago, um, and uh, she was under uh, residence care for about six and a half years. Uh, before that, I've had a chance to interact with her while she was going through um, you know, more of the deterioration. And uh, so I'm here to say, basically, do everything you can if you are in this position to influence someone that's... Uh, uh, you know, cognitively challenged and starting to deteriorate, uh, do everything you can to uh, bring them to um, some activity that they'll enjoy uh, and and uh, and do. Now, they may need to be supervised, uh, maybe coached and coaxed into doing things, but um, I think it's very important to have something um, in their lives that are. Um, you know, stimulating and uh, and also, you know, gets their heart rate up, gets their respiratory rate up, puts a little bit of stress on their on their bones and joints, so they can stay active as possible. It's um, important. Bone strength is important, and flexibility for balance too. Absolutely. Which, which I know, um, folks with cognitive impairment start losing their balance and then they have falls and that causes all kinds of problems. Right, right. So if you have an older parent or a loved one or yourself, you know, um, you know, we want to age correctly and of course avoid the the big, I guess you call it the big four, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, that kind of thing. And it's been shown that uh, several studies that uh, diabetes in particular, high blood pressure, um, can, uh, is very much associated with uh, dementia and uh, other, other forms of dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, so That actually happened to my dad. He needed mm-hmm. to be back on dialysis, yeah. and it was his choice not to do that anymore. But he didn't tell anybody that he should have been on dialysis so we didn't have the opportunity to call hospice and deal with it uh, up front. I yeah. showed up at their house, and right. he thought it was 1998. 
which is really thrilling since I already have one parent with dementia. I didn't need two. Oh. So definitely, and I've read where they think Alzheimer's, they're kind of calling it type 3 diabetes because they think that it's it's also diet-related. Did you see these types of, you know, inappropriate remarks or... or Looking uh, back, yes. And there, it's interesting. I was reading a book where they were discussing slight personality changes, and one of them was, my, you know, mm-hmm. my spouse moved my glasses and I can't find them and it's all their fault. And he called me one day all frustrated because, quote, my mom had moved his, put his glasses away somewhere and he couldn't find them. Yeah. And I just figured, well, that made sense. She probably put them away and he couldn't find them. And now I wonder if that was actually the case, if that was the beginning of his mind going yeah. south. And then there was another incident. He was all up in arms because the you know he wanted to get a he wanted to get i don't know a firearm and the government wanted him to take safety training which is logical i don't see any problem with that but he'd been in the marines in so from 59 to 63 and he was frustrated they wouldn't take that training and i kept pointing out that that was quite a long time ago cuz this was in 2016 so um, I thought that was very strange. I thought having a firearm in the house with a person with cognitive issues was a really bad idea. And logic did not, it did not play a part in that conversation. So I yeah. just, I let it go because he wasn't going to argue with him. But yeah. yeah, that, when I look back now, I see definitely yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah. his mind was definitely not going in the right direction. <laughs> well, there must be uh, websites or uh, books that have kind of a kind of a list of checklist of things to look for um so to save you a step from having to look it up straight from the alzheimer's organization 10 early signs and symptoms of alzheimer's one memory loss that disrupts daily life one of the most common signs of alzheimer's is memory loss especially forgetting recently learned information others include forgetting important dates or events asking for the same information over and over, and increasingly needing to rely on memory aids or family members for things you used to handle on your own. What's a typical age-related change? Sometimes forgetting names or appointments, but remembering them later. Two, challenges in planning or solving problems. Some people may experience changes in their ability to develop and follow a plan or work with numbers. They may have trouble following a familiar recipe or keeping track of monthly bills. They may have difficulty concentrating and take much longer to do things like they did before. A typical age-related change would be making an occasional error when balancing your bank account. Three, difficulty completing familiar tasks at home, work, or at leisure. People with Alzheimer's often find it hard to complete daily tasks. Sometimes people may have trouble driving to a familiar location, managing a budget at work, or remembering the rules of a favorite game. A typical age-related change would occasionally needing help to use the settings on a microwave or record a television show. Four, confusion with time or place. People with Alzheimer's can lose track of dates, seasons, and the passage of time. They may not have... Pardon me. They may have trouble understanding something if it is not happening immediately. Sometimes they may forget where they are or how they got there. What's a typical age-related change? Getting confused about the day of the week, but figuring it out later. Five, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. For some people, having vision problems is a sign of Alzheimer's. They may have difficulty reading, judging distance, and determining color or contrast, which may cause problems while driving. A typical age-related change would be vision changes related to cataracts or, you know, needing to go to the dollar store for readers. Six, new problems with words in speaking or writing. People with Alzheimer's may have trouble following or joining a conversation. They may stop in the middle of a conversation and have no idea how to continue or they may repeat themselves. They may struggle with vocabulary, have problems finding the right word, or call things by the wrong name. A typical age-related change would be having trouble finding the right word occasionally. 7. Misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace steps. 
A person with Alzheimer's disease may put things in an unusual place. They may lose things and be unable to go back over their steps to find them again. Sometimes they may accuse others of stealing. This may occur more frequently over time. A typical age-related change would be misplacing things from time to time, but being able to retrace your steps to find them. 8. Decreased or poor judgment. People with Alzheimer's may experience changes in judgment or decision-making. For example, they may use poor judgment when dealing with money, giving large amounts to telemarketers. They may pay less attention to grooming or keeping themselves clean. A typical age-related change is (laughs) making a bad decision once in a while. We all do that. 9. Withdrawal from work or social activities. A person with Alzheimer's may start to remove themselves from hobbies, social activities, work projects, or sports. They may have trouble keeping up with a favorite sports team or remembering how to complete a favorite hobby. They may also avoid being social because of the changes they have experienced. A typical age-related change would be feeling weary of work, family, and social obligations. And I think that age-related change starts pretty young, personally. And the last one, number 10, changes in mood and personality. The mood and personalities of people with Alzheimer's can change. They can become confused, suspicious, depressed, fearful, or anxious. They may be easily upset at home, at work, with friends, or in places where they are out of their comfort zone. A typical age-related change would be to develop very specific ways of doing things and becoming irritable when a routine is disrupted. If you haven't checked out the Alzheimer's Association's website, definitely do that. It's got tons of fantastic information. I wonder sometimes, hmm, what did I just do? Oh, yeah, I came into this room for, but they're telling me not to worry about that. I mean, everybody does that. But uh, it's one of the things is, is knowing, well, if you have like, you can't find your car keys, and they, uh, that's not usually a sign of a, a memory issue, but not remembering what the car keys are for. That's a biggie. Yeah, that's that definitely a, a warning sign. I can sign. see how that could be a biggie. Or finding household items like your car keys in the refrigerator and your milk in the bathroom. Mm. That kind of inappropriate putting away of things is another sign. Yeah. I, I had an interview with a gal who's living with Alzheimer's. She has early onset Alzheimer's. She's in her early 60s. And she's doing everything. The diet, the nutrition, meditating, journaling, blogging. It's like, it's exhausting thinking of all the things she's doing. But she's doing it so that she has as many good years as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's the point of my podcast is to help people have as many good years as possible for themselves or their loved ones. Or, you know, as I mentioned to you and most of my listeners know, Not only does my mom have Alzheimer's, but my grandmother and my great-grandmother had it. So it's not a good family history. Yeah. So I need to do all these good things sooner rather than later so that I don't end up like them. Well, we know a lot of things about exercise now in in terms of overall health and what kind of impact it, it has, positive impact it has, and especially as we age. Uh... As far as its impact on dementia and uh, Alzheimer's, it certainly can elevate the mood. Uh, it releases endorphins has been shown to help um, ease tension, ease stress. Even though you're putting stress on the body by the movement, uh, it is a kind of stress that's kind of different than you know, depression and anxiety. Um, so this kind of things, depression and anxiety can also lead to restlessness and um, sleeping during the day excessively and possibly even at night being restless at, at night and walking around and leaving the house. Mm-hmm. And I know people have told me stories. Of, oh, I found my dad, uh, my mom found my dad at the shopping center, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, that kind of thing. So, well, I need to go shopping. <laughs> but um, it's certainly an inappropriate time. And uh, just in terms of maintaining your strength, uh, that's one of the most important things to remember uh, because it, it certainly will help your balance, your walking gait, uh, prevention of falls and things like that. And 
just imagine the everyday tasks you have to do, you know, picking up something up, throwing the garbage, uh, taking a hot pot and putting it on the, on the stove or uh, just cleaning your home, things like mm-hmm. that. So these are the kinds of things that everyday tasks of living and addressing yourself, things like that. Uh, keeping that ability going um, and will keep somebody even more independent and more uh, more uh, able to handle what's coming without uh, going into uh, deep depressions. Um, if you're a, if the Alzheimer's victim can maintain a a, a kind of exercise that can bring them to 60 percent of their estimated max, um, that would really go a long way to for uh, helping a healthy uh, cardiovascular system. Um, now, how do you know whether the sixty percent of their max? Well, you can get a, a gauge uh, by simple formulas if you can, and you can just. Uh, Take 220 minus uh, the person's age. It'll give you a, a ballpark figure. Doesn't have to be exact, but uh, you want to have uh, put a little bit more intensity in it than just plain walking, uh, because um, uh, it's been shown that the higher the intensity, the more cognitive um, uh, benefit you have. I've read where if you can talk but not sing, that's a good heart rate to be at mm-hmm. for cognitive help with when, when you're working out helps your brain if you're at that level so that's right. a good level although I can't sing anyway so <laughs> well in terms of sustaining a a, a, um, a note right you know, it, it's it's a, it, it's a good marker also uh, can you uh, recite uh, you know uh, nursery rhyme without you know breaking it off you know that's, that's a good one too yeah um, so, sound overnight sleep, you know, the thing that's important for uh, those people that are uh, aging into uh, maybe a cognitive kind of um, uh, challenge. Uh, we want to be able to reduce the, uh, the amount of sleeping during the day, as I said, and uh, weight training also. Uh, now, I have a feeling that most people are not going to try to bring their mom to a <laughs> to a gym. Uh, what I mean by weight training is putting on stress, putting stress in in the muscles, in the joints. So besides walking, um, you can do very simple things like uh, asking the uh, the. Uh, uh, exercise her to lean against the wall and just pressure her, him or her, herself back and forth in a, in a standing push-up. Um, that can be, uh, you know, a good start. Um, uh, latex bands that are, you know, fairly easy to, to manipulate and uh, just anchor it or hold one end of it and have the the person pull and push against it can be very, very useful. Um, and uh, walking up and down stairs can be, can be very useful too. Um, walking in general is very demonstrated to improve memory and uh, a lot of research studies are very encouraging about physical exercise overall and its benefit. And, uh, Prior to cognitive challenges and, and, and following the decline uh, in the in the uh, in the um, in the brain, um, there's also a, a blood flow issue. Um, the uh, the more intense you can uh, bring exercise to this person, uh, the more um, blood flow gets going. This has an effect on uh, maybe softening the arteries, keeping the arteries more open, um, and uh, certainly uh, uh, preventing uh, 
or reducing the chances of having uh, uh, cardiovascular incidences, stroke, those types of things. Um, yeah, there's a neighbor of my mom's in the memory community. She's there because of a stroke. Mm-hmm. So strokes aren't good for your mind either. Yeah. I'm working with a couple of stroke victims right now and one Alzheimer's uh, uh, person. So he's starting to lose a little bit of his, of his cognitive skills. Uh, you know, brilliant man. He's supposed to have been a very, uh, uh, very good doctor during his uh, career. But, uh, yeah, I remember um, a gentleman in Walnut Creek, um, stocky guy, and uh, he, uh, I had to be really, really patient with him because <laughs> he would get angry because he couldn't hear as well as he should, and of course, um, that made it difficult for him to carry out you know, certain instructions, so um, it was a very much a, um, um, a struggle to, just to keep him, keep him focused and keep him repeating the same things. The more you can get them to repeat things that they enjoy, the more likely they'll continue, continue with it. Um, but uh, it was a very interesting challenge. Um, so just a quick recap. Definitely make it fun. Nobody's going to do a workout routine or any kind of exercise routine if it's not fun, especially somebody that hasn't been in the routine of a daily workout before. Start with a brisk walk. Walk the dogs, go to a park, watch the kids play, watch the changing of the seasons. If there's a botanical garden nearby, that would be a great place to go. It's great for your, you know, the mental health as well as your physical health. You definitely want to do body weight exercises for your bone health. You can start with the wall push-ups like Tony described. You can use soup cans for weights. You can even use the elastic bands. They come in a variety of tension. You could play a little tug-of-war with them. Just don't snap each other. That's not fun. The most important thing, though, is to get your heart rate up, get their heart rate up. You want to be able to talk while you're working out, but not sing, not carry a sustained note. I would demonstrate that for you, but I can't carry a tune with a handle. And if I demonstrated it, you'd definitely turn this episode off and we don't want that. So let's get back to Tony. He's going to talk a little bit more about heart rates and VO2 max, which is the fancy term for heart rate. Let's take a quick break and hear a message from our presenting sponsor. Sponsors allow us to bring you this podcast free of charge every week, something we absolutely love to do. MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbkseniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. VO2 max, uh, are you aware of the uh, what that means? Yes, I've okay. done my own personal VO2 okay. max testing twice. All right. The, uh, your maximum heart rate is uh, pretty much set, and it's going to decline as you go, as you get uh, older. And same with VO2 max. That's the amount of oxygen you can consume and use in generating uh, uh, energy in your body. Um, and it's measured as a particular volume of, of oxygen per uh, kilogram of body weight uh, the, per minute. Uh, the higher you can keep that through your aging process, the, 
more you're likely to uh, uh, avoid chronic illnesses and, of course, keep your, your brain activity very high. I guess that's uh, good motivation for when your workout gets tough and you want to back off. Remember, mm-hmm. remember, it's good for your brain, too. Absolutely. Uh, running is a very interesting uh, exercise. I've been a runner for, you know, didn't get serious about it until about uh, 40 years old. So, so I've been running about uh, 30 years or so and uh, brought a lot of people to the, to the sport and hopefully I've kept them going um, and uh, dealt with a lot of adults and middle-aged people. Uh, in running, and uh, I just uh, am an va- advocate that uh, uh, running can be a very, very uh, important part of uh, of the aging process in terms of its impact. It has a tremendous impact, apparently, on the brain more than almost any other exercise, including cycling and and um, walking, swimming, those types of things. Um, do they have I'm any idea why? Um, just the amount of uh, cognitive skills you need hmm. to, do, to, to do it. For instance, let's say you're running on a, on a trail. Have you ever been out to uh, single track trails? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On your bicycle too? No, I'm a road cyclist. Okay. But if you are a cyclist and you're, you're taking... Uh, Trails, you're going to have more of a challenge to plan. Mm-hmm. That makes plan sense. Ahead. Yeah, and uh, running is, is very mechanical. People don't think of it as a very, you know, uh, attentive. It's just one foot in front of the other. But really, uh, it's a lot of work goes into a lot of work comes out of the brain to get you coordinate. You know, four limbs. Makes sense. Yeah. And get you off the ground and onto the next leg and onto the next leg. Okay. Uh, and if you're doing it in, let's say, uh, uh, let's say the start of Beta Breakers, <laughs> you know how that is. Yep, that's crazy. You have a, you know, a corral that's supposed to be a certain amount of, uh, certain pace, but uh, it's never going to happen. So you're, you're running along and, you know, you find suddenly you find three people walking in front of you, you know, side by side. So that can be a very cognitively, cognitively challenging um, environment for your brain. Um, and if you're not aware, you know, you're going to run into one of those, uh, yeah. one of those uh, parking meters <laughs> on the sidewalk going up Hay Street Hill. Anyway, um, so quicker recall, um, better memory, generally feeling sharper is what I, uh, I think uh, running brings to people. Um, a lot of people have uh, uh, an idea that uh, it, it brings on arthritis or makes we, it worse. We talked about that, and you yeah. cleared me up on that one. Well, I think... Uh, I think it's important to know that form is very important and the way you use your body is very important in the running motion. Um, certainly your weight would have something to do with it. But uh, I think it's been shown that running doesn't necessarily generate arthritis. It's, it's mostly a generic uh, uh, disposition um, for uh, losing cartilage. But... Uh, uh, there are a lot of things you can do to ameliorate uh, some of that impact uh, simply by looking at a good running form. And uh, So getting a running coach would be a good idea. Well, yeah. Well, I am a running coach. Uh, actually, uh, if anybody's interested in, in uh, running with a group, I have a run club, local run club. We have uh, runs every weekend throughout uh, Brentwood, Oakley, uh, Antioch, any other parts of East County, and uh, we have uh, organized runs Sundays and S- Sundays and Saturdays. So, if anybody's interested in doing that, uh, maybe I can give them out my 
uh, email address and sure. they can contact me. Or if you have a parent or or a loved one that uh, um, you might want to uh, get started on some kind of activity program, I do have uh, quite a bit of experience working with uh, frail elderly and uh, also those with stroke and and uh, and dementia and Alzheimer's. So if you'd like to contact me, uh, let me get my email address out, and that would be runfitter, R-U-N-F-I-T-T-E-R, at 46, I'm sorry, let me correct that, runfitter46 at gmail.com, runfitter46 at gmail. I'll link that up in the show notes, too. All right. Thank you very much. And then tell me a little bit about what you did when you... When you realized your mom was having cognitive issues, you told me on the phone you some stuff you did with her physically to help. Oh, I had an opportunity to. She wasn't living here um, at the time. Um, She was uh, with my sister, one of my sisters, um, Hemet, on the Imperial Valley. Um, But when I visited, uh, um, we were. uh, I asked her to get outside and uh, we would uh, you know do a good brisk walk Um, we had some uh, challenging reaches or ask her to touch something to her low left and touch something to her high right those types of things and uh, then I uh, um, asked her to uh, you know to go through a little bit course you know would change her her Direction. Direction, yeah. Um, like an obstacle course, things like that. So uh, she was, uh, you know, puzzled about why we were doing certain things, but uh, I, you know, trying to convince her that, uh, you know, uh, it was going to be good for her. Um, I did notice that <laughs> when we got back, she really wanted to sleep. So um, maybe if I had a chance to intervene a little earlier in her um, in her decline it would have been uh, it would have been much better but she was she was well along by then um, and I think my sister was thinking about that at that time that it wouldn't be long before she would go into some kind of care um, they certainly didn't want to leave her and go on vacation so uh, without somebody there so it was convenient for me to visit while they were they were traveling for a few days yeah yeah that's important for caregivers to get respite because it's mm. it's never ending and it doesn't get better unfortunately yeah. well she did a tremendous job both my sisters did uh, um, they housed her uh, she, for I don't know how many years living with her she living with them excuse me uh, maybe 12 years 13 years that's a long like time that. yeah well, it's been interesting um, talking to you about this. I haven't had a chance to express myself about um, <clears throat> what went on in my family, um, and it's certainly uh, uh, healthy to do so. I, um, I want to continue to contribute. I've been looking at ways to uh, support the Alzheimer's Associations and... Uh, uh, by the way of, uh, of doing that, I might be traveling to the UK to do a charity run. Oh, that'd be I've fun. I've been seeing, it seems to me there's a lot more activity uh, in Europe, in the in UK. There are also associations that have uh, numerous opportunities to, uh, to uh, express support through a run or other sporting activities, things like that. Um, though I might be able to do it here with my own fundraising page. So I'm considering doing that uh, fundraising page uh, to uh, put myself out there and say, hey, I want to complete this particular task well, or marathon or whatever it might be. I know the Alzheimer's organization <clears throat> has an event called The Longest Day coming up. Hmm. And I haven't checked into if that's a run, a walk. I've seen advertisements where there's somebody on a bicycle so I'm wondering if it's different sports. Mm-hmm. I'll have to check into that. And I, 
I do other fundraising with cycling, so I haven't jumped on that yet, although I am working later this year with the legislative ambassador for our local congressman's office mm -hmm. um, here in town. They're having a fundraiser, so I'm doing that. Yeah. So I'm getting into the advocacy part also. Oh. And they just, uh, the Alzheimer's Association was uh, advocating for Congress to fund the NIH $415 million more than they've been funding it for this coming year because they're trying to find the first person to survive Alzheimer's. And they think with this continued increase in funding that they will be able to find that person and that will lead to discoveries on... What does Alzheimer's survival look like? The, um, I think living with it and not going into, you know, a loss of cognitive abilities where you can't care for yourself. Oh, All right, so, the, ask the, them so the brain markers are there, but yeah. they're still functioning at a fairly high level. Yes. Despite the brain, the markers. Exactly. Oh, I see. Interesting. Well, I think it would be stopping the disease in its tracks, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I will definitely have to ask. Mm -hmm. But that's their goal, and they think they can get there in five to ten years. So yeah. that's positive for people like me who aren't very old yet. I mean, hope us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I, I don't like my family history, so I do everything I can. Yes. I started my weight loss journey because of the diabetes in our family. And I'm glad I did because now I know that maintaining a healthy, active lifestyle will also right. help my brain. So good thing I started when I did. Yeah. Smart cookie. <laughs> well, I appreciate you talking to me this morning, despite the... The noisy gym. They decided to work on the gym while we were... Yeah, yeah. A little, a little <laughs> drilling here and there. <laughs> Maintenance is... Our you got to maintain everything, right? Well, I maintain appreciate it. Maintain your body. It. Maintain your gym. That's true. Well, thank you very much, and I'm sure I'll be seeing you around the gym regularly. Okay. Thanks, Jennifer. And I'll, uh, I'll answer any questions anybody has uh, uh, if you want to email me, like I said, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. That'd be great. Thank okay. you. So now you know that regular exercise can reduce your risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. But did you know that that can be an up to a 50% decrease? Studies have shown that women from ages 40 to 60 who exercised regularly were seen to have a dramatic reduction in memory loss and cognitive decline. Yep, that's right. The key to keeping your brain power at optimal strength is exercise. You were hoping it was a pill. More recent findings suggest that an overall active lifestyle is the key to brain and body health. To see the best benefits of your exercise program, the latest research reveals that the magic number for maintaining cognitive fitness with age and preventing Alzheimer's is to work up to a level of 150 minutes per week of a combination of cardio exercise and strength training. Great ways to get in your aerobic exercise include brisk walking, jogging, dancing, swimming, playing tennis, going to the gym, using an elliptical, treadmill, or stationary bike. Outdoor cycling is excellent as well. It stimulates your brain because you have to maintain balance without thinking about balancing. But don't crash like I did a couple of years ago. That's definitely not good for your bone health. Anything that gets your heart pumping and your muscles moving is heading you in the right direction to better overall health. Plus, when you include strength training, you know, weights, resistance machines, uh, body weight exercises, you maintain your muscle mass and prevent osteoporosis and other related illnesses. The other good reason for maintaining muscle mass is the more lean muscle you have, the more fat you burn while you're sitting on your buns. That is the one fact that got me into weight training because it's not definitely my, one of my favorite things to do at the gym. So I hope this was beneficial and I look forward to bringing you more stories and useful information next week. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today or in previous episodes as well, please go to wherever you download your podcasts from and rate and review us. This allows others to find us and allows us to share the wisdom and support we've garnered over the years. Thanks again. See you next week. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss.